Hello everybody, Justin here, and I'm one of the nature interpreters at Royal Botanical Gardens. Now, I'm joining you from a wonderful wetland. Okay, well, not really. Now, wetlands, they include your bogs, your swamps, your vernal pools, or areas that get seasonally flooded, and of course marshes like Coots Paradise Marsh. Wetlands are extremely important environments, and they provide pretty much all types of animals, from fish to birds to mammals to mussels and all kinds of plants, all the insects and amphibians, so they are extremely important ecosystems in our environment. Now a kitchen isn't really a wetland, but a lot of the items that you find in the kitchen can help explain why these wetlands are so important and some of their functions. So now I'm going to go on a bit of a scavenger hunt to try and show you and explain some of these wetland functions. Now you are welcome to try and search for these items as well to see what your wetland looks like compared to mine and we'll see what we get. So let's get started. Well, let's start here with a sponge. Now wetlands are super important areas that store a lot of water, just like a sponge will soak up a lot of water. So all of the excess water from heavy rains, from snow melting, they get kind of trapped in these wetlands and can be stored there so that it doesn't cause flooding elsewhere. Now not only do wetlands prevent flooding, but they that stored water can also be super helpful in times of drought. So it's kind of a win-win terms of water storage. That's item number one. Now for our next item, I think we'll move over here where I have a whisk. Now wetlands are very important for mixing in a lot of the oxygen and the nutrients in the water. Now with also all the plants that grow in wetlands, the diversity of plants that they have, as well as all of the different kinds of animals and the slow moving water. There's a lot going on that helps wetlands clean up and maintain healthy water. For example, all of those plants help filter out a lot of the sediment that might come from erosion. So it's trapping all of those small little sand and rock particles in the wetland so that clearer water can continue flowing out into the rest of the watershed. Now, not only does it filter out the solid particles, but it also helps to clean up a lot of pollutants. Now, a lot of the plants and the animals that live in wetlands, like mosses, willow trees, and freshwater mussels, they will filter the water as they use it and pull out a lot of the pollutants like nitrates and heavy metals, releasing cleaner water back out into the environment. So wetlands are definitely very important for cleaning up water as well. Here I have a little jar of baby food. Now, wetlands, not so much for human babies, but they are very, very important nurseries for all the animals. And they provide the food and the shelter for pretty much all kinds of baby animals, from birds that are looking to nest, from tadpoles that need ponds to swim around it before they grow their legs and can hop around, as well as lots of insects like dragonflies that spend the first part of their life in the water, and of course mammals like muskrats and beavers that live in wetlands. So they are definitely very important nurseries and provide that home for the baby animals to grow up in. Now not only do they provide for baby animals, but they also provide for a lot of adult animals and humans too. Now here I have an example of one of the foods that grows in marshes called wild rice. Now, wild rice has been a very important food for thousands and thousands of years, and it's really only one example of the many different plants that wetlands grow that has been uh, important for animals and humans alike. I have my next item, a wonderful pillow. Wait, you don't have a pillow in your kitchen drawers? Well, 
Regardless, wetlands are very important resting spots for migratory birds. So they provide everything that birds are looking for while they are on their long journey and looking for a place to kind of rest and relax and recharge before continuing on. Kind of just like how this pillow makes me want to take a nice nap right now. Now last but not least, cannot forget about the lovely sink. Now, wetlands, we talked about water storage, but they also act as a carbon sink and store a lot of the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. With all of the plants that are constantly growing in and outside of the water in wetlands, a lot of that carbon dioxide gets stored as solid plant matter uh, and it's taken out of the atmosphere. So, there you have it. This is what my wetland looks like and some of the reasons why wetlands are so important. Now, lots of organizations like the Royal Botanical Gardens and the Bay Area Restoration Council work towards protecting and restoring these wetlands for these reasons. So whether it's planting native species, restoring natural barriers using Christmas trees, the ongoing operation of the fishway, stopping invasive carp from getting into the marsh, and ongoing public education. There's tons of work going on to protect these ecosystems that are vital to our environment. And of course, there is still tons more work that needs to be done. So if you'd like to learn more about some of the conservation and restoration efforts, you can head over and visit rbg.ca slash wetland restoration. If you are looking for the list of these items, you can find them as part of an all about wetlands activity book at rbg.ca slash at home. So I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, happy learning.